Our next speaker, uh, Marek Przybyszewski, uh, will present uh, the EU FOSA 2. Um, please welcome Marek. Uh, good evening, everybody. I will be talking about the EU FOSA 2 project. I'm Marek Przybyszewski. I'm working at the European Commission, uh, DG Informatics uh, Unit B3. Uh, I've been working in the European Commission for 11 years now, and four years in DG Informatics, Digit. I've been a developer before, but that's uh, just my background. So, what is EU FOSA and EU FOSA 2? Uh, it all had started as by with the Harblit bug, where every, which shook the world, uh, and everybody thought, what what can we do about the security of uh, open source software? The estimated uh, cost of this, of this bug is uh, at some estimated as high as uh, half a billion uh, euro the, the co worldwide, the cost of, of, uh, of this bug happening. So also at the European Parliament, the, uh, there were two members of the European Parliament, uh, Julia Reda and Max Anderson, who um, managed to get to a difficult process of of creating so-called pilot project. The parliament has the possibility to, uh, to launch uh, pilot projects for different purposes. That there are many proposals every year. Uh, the, uh, and this one was one of the selected ones because of the importance of, of security uh, of open source software. So after this has been uh, voted by the, by the committees at the parliament and the parliament itself, it went for execution to the European Commission, and uh, we uh, nicknamed it EU FOSA, as every project needs to, needs to have an acronym. It was, it, uh, was running during 2015-2016, and for this first iteration of the project, we used the tools which we had at hand at that time, which were very easy to, to, to use, is to, have, to use existing framework contracts with the companies that, that are working on other, uh, on other projects with the European Commission already. So, the project was uh, done by a consortium of uh, companies KPMG and Trussis and uh, uh, another company, Avery. Uh, what did we do during this, uh, in this project? The project delivered a methodology, how to do code reviews at the EU institutions, how to select software for doing such uh, code reviews, what is the criticality of the software and so on and so forth. Uh, it uh, delivered an inventory of uh, free and open source software used at the European uh, Commission. There was a public survey done it, uh, to, to help choosing the software to, to do the first uh, code reviews. And we did uh, two formal code reviews, so the, uh, of, uh, of KeyPass version 1.x and, uh, and Apache HTTP server core. Uh, these were done by, uh, uh, by a hacking center of, of Everest. Uh, they detected some uh, not, not serious uh, uh, problems and, and then the general uh, um, response was that yes, it's nice to, to do this, uh, to, to do this uh, kind of project, but can we still do it better? Uh, keep us uh, in particular, uh, Dominic Reich was very happy about, about this, that it helped, it helped the, the, the project to, to, to advance. So, EU FOSA is over, it was 2015-2016. Now we are uh, at uh, the next, uh, next stage of the, of the project. The um, initial uh, success uh, made the, uh, the, the members of the parliament want to continue it, and there is another one uh, in the middle, uh, the, the, the photo in the middle, Marice Hake, who was here this morning, maybe some of you at, uh, were in this uh, in, in the morning keynote talk, uh, who wanted she wanted to do bug bounties. This this matched exactly the, the, the needs of the uh, what, what, how could we improve the, the EU FOSA. So the, this became a single what what is now called preparatory action. Uh, the cycle of doing things at the, at the EU is first we have a pilot project, then we have a preparatory action, we can repeat the preparatory action. At the end, it may become, when it is, uh, when it is uh, successful and supported by, by, uh, by the uh, members of the parliament, may become a permanent action of the EU, so something that the EU will do 
uh, uh, continuously. So again, this uh, after uh, um, being approved by the by the European Parliament, it went for execution to to the European Commission. We uh, started working on it in 2017. Uh, the uh, we managed to make it run for a little bit longer, so we will not do, run it during just two years, but now three years, 2017 to 2019. As you can see, the budget is higher, 2.6 million euros for, for this time. The, uh, we can, with this uh, budget, we can do uh, much more and explore some new ideas. <coughs> so the first thing to explore, and that's, uh, I think, uh, very cool to, to do, is uh, uh, bug bounties. There are some uh, people who say that it's not maybe the best way to address the security of open source software, but I think it's, uh, uh, it's, uh, it, it uh, does pretty well, well the job. We had uh, a chance to, to already try it once, as uh, this is something that the European institutions never did before. The European institutions never paid uh, uh, any uh, uh, researchers or hackers for finding bugs in software. So this 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 was uh, uh, launching this te test test drive, as it is called in the slide. This uh, this proof of concept uh, took us uh, uh, five months, uh, more or less. We uh, uh, audited this way the VLC, and uh, following a mini competition, a mini uh, tendering process. Out of uh, six companies that have bid it, uh, we choose, chose Hacker One for, for this uh, for this trial. So, what uh, did we uh, deliver? As I say, as I said, this is the first time the EU institutions did uh, did such a thing. It lasted the the, uh, the bounty uh, program lasted for six weeks. There were 28 participants, and the five bounties have been paid. So, after all this preparation, we managed to. To, to prove that, that this is an approach that, that, uh, that works. This was also thanks to the great collaboration with, uh, uh, with VLC. The team there was very active and very happy to, to, to receive this kind of support. And yes, they, they used the, the, the HackerOne platform to, to, uh, to work with this uh, project. Uh, these 28 participants, the, you can see the, uh, a little graph of the um, of the participation uh, on the right of the slide uh, by, by continent. So, what next? After we, we did this uh, proof of concept, we, before it even finished, we started preparing uh, what is called the call for, call for tenders. That's a formal procurement process where we, if, if the European institutions want to uh, spend uh, large amounts of money, there needs to be a fair process to assess all the, all the companies that would like to do uh, a certain activity and then choose, choose the best ones. We are now at the end of uh, preparing the text of the call for tenders. What I can say about it before it is published is that there, there is 1.6 million euro budget foreseen for that, for that uh, action alone. We uh, intend to have more than 20 uh, different uh, uh, projects audited this way. We are targeting critical open source software and there will be some uh, high rewards in, in, included in the, in the process uh, as we also want to try to uh, target um, very high profile uh, uh, projects for looking for security uh, vulnerabilities like for example encryption uh, algorithms. The more information, there are, if there are companies that are interested to participate in this call for tenders for, for uh, offering the service of, of, uh, of uh, uh, bug hunting, there, there is a, an official page down in the slide. It's called uh, prior information. And for the time being, about the call for tenders, I'm not allowed to say much more because everybody has the right to receive the information at the same time. And, and so on and so forth. This is a very formal process, so, but I have to stop here. What else do we plan to do in the uh, EU FOSA 2 is uh, try another approach 
for, pro, for a project which uh, is uh, distributed around the world, that maybe they, they have never uh, had the opportunity to meet uh, in person, bring them together, let them work, and maybe a project that has outstanding security uh, related problems like architectural problems in the project that cannot be fixed without them meeting together, invite them all to, to, to Brussels, Let's, let them work for, for some days, and this way maybe arrive at the, at the conclusion, at the, at the way to, to solve properly uh, outstanding, outstanding uh, security problems. This is planned for uh, November 2018, more or less. Uh, also, what we want to do is uh, bring more awareness about the, uh, the project itself. So there will be more communication where it, uh, it should uh, happen very, uh, very soon. The, we want to bring more also that was requested by the, by the uh, uh, MEPs to, to bring also more awareness about the importance of the software security in general and in the, in the context of open source software. And also, um, we want to have a professional company to, to listen to, to all the reactions that are there and then to adjust the project as it goes so that, uh, so that we can do the best out of it. What's the ultimate goal of, this, uh, of the project? Is to try different methods of addressing the security of, of the uh, free and open source software used at the EU institutions. Uh, and um, at the same time, invest into the security of, uh, of uh, make, make this a permanent action. That's the, that's the, that's the, that's the goal. So we are trying different, different approaches. We tried formal code reviews. We are trying now Vagvantis. We want to try the hackathon. We can also try other things still in 2018 to, to find uh, the best way how the EU institutions can invest in the uh, uh, security of open source software. And on, this, on the way there, we hope that we will be already improving the, the, the security of, of, uh, of open source software as there will be maybe some vulnerabilities found and fixed. Uh, so that's, uh, mm, that's it, uh, it for me, for me uh, about the project uh, now. I, the core of the project will be executed during uh, the second half of 2018 and the first half of 2019. We are still uh, preparing a lot of, uh, a lot of things to, to, to make it happen. Uh, if you have any ideas, please uh, use the email uh, uh, address that is on the slide. Please watch the uh, join up page that will start to get alive soon. Uh, currently, it is still on containing information about the EU FOSA 1 project. You can find the information about that, that project, the deliveries of that uh, previous project and so on and so forth. Uh, thank you very much. I would like to use the occasion to thank Pierre, who is sitting here, who just, uh, after 25 years in the Commission, he just retired and he was helping a lot uh, in, this, in this project. He was behind the open source software strategy of, of, the, of Digit in 2000 already. So uh, please, uh, I would like to <laughs> thank him very much for, for, the, for the work. It's, uh, <laughs> It was uh, really a pleasure to, to work with him. Now, uh, uh, I'm alone. I don't know if there is, uh, there is also a full-time project manager that joined us uh, in December just for this project. So, so that I, I'm managing several projects at the same time. I hope that this will, this will uh, I'm sure that this will make, uh, make the project run much, much faster. So thank you very much. And uh, if you have questions, please. Uh, Uh, so the question was how many uh, did 
software projects, of open source software projects that are used in the uh, commission that we managed to study, and if we want to extend it to other public administrations. Mm -hmm. So, the, uh, we have time for questions? Yes, five minutes. Okay. So, the only two projects that uh, were uh, reviewed are the KIPAS and, uh, and Apache HTTP Server Core. Now, VLC also using the bug bounties. There will be more in the, in, in the future. We want to join, have more institutions involved in the project. Uh, about, but if we look at the different uh, software projects that are used in the different EU institutions, I'm sure that will cover most of the software used in all the public administrations. So if you have no more questions, we can, yeah, well, I will be hanging out uh, here around the, around the door, I think. There is the time inside.